Ah, greetings and welcome people. Out for another evening ride. Just for a quick spin. It's such a beautiful evening. And I haven't had a chance to get out on the bike at all this weekend. So, uh, so it just had to be done. I'm just going to go for a quick loop. And while I'm out, I thought I might do a, a self-challenge. As I said, I don't do Facebook, so I can't go onto the Challenge Accepted Facebook page and sign up for challenges. So uh, I tend to do challenges as I hear other motor vloggers do them. So, oh, excuse me, sniffing a bit. It's a bit cool this evening. So I think I'm going to do the 3R challenge. I'm going to get straight into it, because as I say, I'm only out for a short ride, and that looks like a rather beautiful evening sky. Three reasons why I ride and why I ride this bike. Now the reason one is very simple, very straightforward, and like the other reasons, it's basically going to be a rehash of things that I have said in other vlogs and it is basically the word that is printed on the tank and on other parts of the bike Triumph Now like a lot of Americans ride Harleys and Indians a lot of Germans and other Europeans prefer to ride BMWs I'm British so I prefer to ride a Triumph. That's not to say that I don't think any other ma makes a bike are any good. I'm sure they are. It's just that my philosophy is that whatever I'm looking for in a motorbike, I will look for it in a Triumph first. If I can't find it in a Triumph, then I will quite happily look for it in some other brand. And those brands, probably in order of preference, would be BMW, Yamaha, Honda. But again, that's not to say that I'm excluding other brands. So, reason one, reason one for riding the bike I ride is a Triumph, and I want to ride a Triumph. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a rather splendid evening sky. I hope that's coming up on the camera. It should do. It's a Sony Exmor sensor, but you never know. Reason two. Like most people who ride bikes, I ride a bike because I want to ride a bike. I like riding a bike. I like riding my bike. Like so many people. I started riding a bike when I was 17 and pretty much uh, as soon as I got serious with my then girlfriend and I mean and later, later fiance and now wife. Uh, yes we did ride quite a few places on the bikes I had back then but they weren't really up to doing anything serious, going away or anything like that. Um, but really it was, for me back then, it was more a way of, of getting to and from work and things like that. So basically I had to, well, decided I needed to ditch the bike and get a car. So that's what I did and like so many people who did that, uh, I regretted it pretty much from the from day one and always wanted to get back on two wheels which I would do at any given opportunity borrowing um, my younger brother's bike when, I, when uh, my car was in the shop for repair and sometimes just borrowing just to go for a ride so that was uh, reason number two I ride a bike because I want to ride a bike and as, uh, as I say, most people who ride bikes will understand that because they do the same. They ride bikes because they want to ride bikes. 
and also because it brings a lot of other benefits such as if you do need to commute somewhere obviously doing so on a bike can be more convenient and time saving than doing so in a car and the third reason the third reason is quite a lot more personal and it's a, it's a conjunction uh, well I say conjunction it's a bit of a follow on well look at that sky amazing it's a follow on from the second one it was a time in my life when I was working in West London in Ealing and my mother was at the time seriously ill something she sadly didn't recover from but she was ill for quite a long time and working in West London I was thinking to myself the, if, if I need to get somewhere in a hurry then being in a car is probably not going to be the best way to do it I can get to London from home on a bike if I need to get somewhere from London quickly I can do it a lot more readily on a bike so that was the, re the, the catalyst for actually purchasing a bike at that time now, ironically um, when the, uh, the fateful day finally did arrive um, I'd actually gone to gone to West London in the car so there we are I, I bought myself a bike to be prepared for an emergency and when that emergency finally arrived I didn't have the bike but it never mind it was it was what got me back on two wheels in, in a way so it's a bit of a sad reason for getting back on two wheels um, and so some, some people might say it's a bit uh, it's a bit off using your mother's um, serious health problems to uh, justify getting a bike but it wasn't it wasn't all about that at all Twat. It was a, a, a oh, golden Bennett, a serious consideration. But as I say, it didn't actually pan out at the time. <clears throat> so I thought I might segue into a second vlog while I'm out. As I've still got a little bit of this loop to go. And uh, there's been a few vlogs done recently about the risk aspect of riding a motorcycle. I think Calm Biker, oh excuse me, was the first one I saw. But, ooh, lost the road then for a second. Um, Calm Biker was the, the first one I saw recently that um, discussed this and I think Hippodrones has done one and a couple of other people have uh, also done them and it sort of encompasses the, the ideas of what gear you wear when you're riding I think it was primarily aimed at um, those, those riders who especially in hot, hot weather and hot climates will wear t-shirt and shorts and trainers and but the only actually real genuinely protective gear they wear is a crash helmet and they're basically saying I mean should, should you do that and I think that the general consensus is ultimately it's your choice as motorcyclists as people who ride motorbikes I think we are all perfectly aware of the extra vulnerability that, that uh, goes with pursuing the, the hobby or pastime or activity that we, we all participate in. Oh, that was a fox, a dead fox, and I had a bit of target lock there. I was looking at it, so I hit it. Guess I'm going to be cleaning the bike when I get home.
as I say, we, we all, I, I certainly hope we all appreciate that there is extra vulnerability that comes with what we do. But I think most of us, if not all of us, when we head out on our bikes, we head out with the every intention, every full intention of coming home safely in one, with us and our bikes in one piece. I certainly know I do, and I think some people who don't ride motorbikes have the, have the thought that motorcyclists go out to take risks, to, to put themselves in danger. There's some kind of adrenaline rush of taking chances and pushing the envelope, doing silly things. And I can categorically assure anybody that thinks that, that it certainly is not the, the case with me. I want to get home to my family, I want my bike to get home in one piece, with no damage. You wait there, thank you. So for, for my point uh, from my side that means that I ride not so much carefully but I have taken advanced riding training which means that I do more forward planning possibly than people who haven't thank you um, I certainly don't go around uh, roads and corners very fast, getting my knee down, um, crossing solid white lines. Let's face it, those solid white lines cost an awful lot of money for the local authorities to put paint on the road. They're not going to put them there for no good reason. In other words, they are going to have a good reason for putting them there, and it's usually because that stretch of road is hazardous with limited sight lines and that type of thing. Hmm. Excuse me. Some company back there. Oh, there's a copper. So even if you do go out with the full intention of not doing anything stupid, not putting yourself at risk, anything more than you already do by riding a motorcycle. Should you wear full protective gear at all times, in all weathers? Well certainly, I mean it's a cooler night tonight so I've got my um, normal jacket on, not my ventilated jacket. <coughs> I've still got my ventilated gloves on but I have to put my heated grips on as you can see the LED flashing away on the grips there. And I do have my boots on to keep my tootsies warm. But I'm wearing ordinary ordinary jeans, not uh, biker jeans. So, to an extent, I am taking a small risk. Yes, if I come off at any sort of speed, um, I could end up with, excuse me, with abrasions on my legs, if nowhere else. So that, that that from that side of things is, like I say, is a slight risk. Would I ride wearing t-shirts and shorts? T-shirt and shorts? No. Never. And uh, some people who knew me when I was way back when in my younger days, when I was riding bikes in my early days, they probably accused me of being a hypocrite because back then I sometimes did ride in a t-shirt. But maybe maturity has brought some extra sense. I wouldn't do it now. I'm not sure why, it's just one of those things, I think. <coughs> I 
but we all have to make our own choices. And I think the Sipo drones were saying about the, the, the consequences of our choices don't just fall on us. Obviously, if I come off my bike and I get hurt in an accident, regardless of what I'm wearing, it's going to be an upset for my family, it's going to cause inconvenience to the emergency services who have to come to my assistance, and obviously it's going to be an extra load on the NHS for my treatment. If, uh, if it's an injury accident, of course, if it's worse, then, then it's worse. So when, we, so when I say the, the, the consequences of our choices fall on us as individuals, there is always going to be collateral damage. There's always going to be people caught in the, in the fallout in one way or another. Now, one thing that, that came to mind when I was watching these vlogs from these other guys, something I saw many years ago, and it's not to do with motorbikes, it was to do with cyclists, and there was a cyclist who <coughs> excuse me, made the comment that he didn't see the point in wearing a cycle helmet, just an ordinary cycle helmet, because, and this is his justification, it's not going to save his life in the event he gets involved in a serious accident. And this is true. But of course, that is this um, black and white thinking that it's only going to be affected by a serious accident. What about if you just hit a pothole and fall off your bike and hit your head on the kerb? It's not a high speed incident at all. But if you're not wearing a helmet, chances are you're going to fracture your skull at the, you know, let's say it's a very good chance that that could be just a concussion, but... So basically what wearing that helmet does is it reduces the severity of the possible injuries. Now in a very, a very minor spill, it could mean you have no injuries at all, maybe a few bruises to your arms and legs. But if you're in a very minor spill, you just, as I say, you lose your balance, you hit a pothole and fall off a bike, then and, and hit your head then the helmet's going to do its job take the brunt of the impact and you're probably going to have absolutely no head injury at all maybe just a bit shaken up if you're not wearing a helmet then that minor spill as i say suddenly becomes life-threatening life-changing possibly even life-ending so to say that um you know, why wear a jacket and leather jeans and things like that because they're not going to stop you getting badly injured in a serious accident so you won't have a serious accident you don't, you aren't necessarily the one that makes that decision, that choice no matter how safe and attentive and skilled a rider you are and I don't count myself as a particularly highly skilled rider there's always the chance that it's someone else's actions that are going to cause you the problem now you can do all the forward planning and reading the road and looking at uh, you know, behaviour of other vehicles, keeping your distance, which I'm not doing very well at the moment, I need to drop back a bit. But if you're overtaking someone and at that last second as you're alongside them, they decide they want to be in your lane and you're not paying attention or whatever, then they're going to come across into your lane, skittle you off the road, and so, like I say, it's, it's not always down to you. <clears throat> it's not always down to you being silly, it's not always down to you to ride as carefully as you can, thinking that you're never going to be involved in an accident. Never say never, as they say.
think it's one of those subjects that um, is, is going to always be argued over because there's always going to be people that will say well it's my choice and yes that's true it is your choice <coughs> oh excuse me I think what, what has to be looked at is the, the basis for making that choice and has, has that person making that choice fully explored the reasons and consequences for that choice <coughs> excuse me So all I can say really on that, um, on that matter is that for me, I try to err on the side of sensible. As I say, I'm wearing a, a ballistic nylon textile jacket with armour and a back protector. I'm wearing a decent helmet, wearing a well, fairly Oh, excuse me, fairly cheap boots, to be honest. I'm still trying to break in my new boots. And, uh, and I'm wearing, obviously, armoured bike gloves. Although, again, they are fairly cheap ones. I don't know how good they'd be. But I'm taking that little bit of a risk by wearing ordinary jeans, ordinary denim jeans. So... <clears throat> so, to, 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 to an extent, time trusting to luck a little, but not fully. So it's, it's an interesting topic. As I say, we'll have supporters and detractors on either side of the argument. And, uh, and it's a debate that I think will possibly never be resolved unless, uh, unless certain <coughs> agencies step in and mandate that certain types of clothing have to be worn like they have for crash helmets. But like uh, like seatbelts in cars and crash helmets before they became a legal requirement. I saw the sense in wearing a seatbelt, in wearing a crash helmet, before they were required by law. <coughs> so I always wore them. So when I first started riding bikes, I didn't initially, but soon started wearing one because I just didn't like getting my eyes and mouth full of bugs and grit and rain I was kept caught out by those traffic lights I always see the red but don't see the green <laughs> mm. so yes interesting topic generate lots of debate I'm sure but as I say until so the government steps in and says you must wear clothing to this standard then people will wear only what is required by law and make their own choices on everything else that is the sort of society we live in and I think with some people the more you say to them no you're stupid for not wearing that the more they'll do it because they just like to put, put people's backs up but there we are nice little evening ride I hope the video comes out okay like I say, it should do with this camera. So, 
So, um, I think I'll be able to leave it there. There's plenty of police around tonight. <coughs> and I'll say, as I say, I'll say thank you for watching. And as you probably noticed, just quick, uh, quick uh, comment that uh, there's only uh, only footage from this camera on this one because I just didn't think it would be worth setting up the other camera. I don't, I didn't think it would catch very much at all. So it'll make my editing a little bit easier, won't it? Oh yes. Oh yes. <clears throat> so as I was saying, thank you for stopping by and taking a look and I shall speak to you again on the next one. Cheerio for now. Bye.